everybody. I'm Amtech Ron. Welcome back to my Amp Lab. And today we're going to talk about testing capacitors. You can do it with a digital multimeter, but it does it as a low voltage and it'll basically only tell you the capacitance. Capacitors cause a lot of problems and when you really got to get down to the root of the issue and find out what's going on, I turn to this. This is my Sencor LC101 Capacitor Inductor Analyzer, and this is Tools of the Trade. On a serious note, if you don't know what you're doing, please don't work in a high voltage environment. It can only end badly. Most of the capacitors you see inside of music gear are gonna fall into one of two broadly defined categories. One is what I would call coupling caps, which you see up here. And then we'll call the other group down here filter caps. Now coupling caps, we see uh, the ubiquitous orange drop, a ceramic disc, a silver mica cap, poly, and this is even a metal mill spec one that you'll sometimes run into. I've seen these on Russian amps. And for down here, these are all electrolytic caps. Uh, we have one axial example and two radial examples. We're going to take a look at all these kind of capacitors in circuit, what they do, how they fail, and how we test them. So let's take a deeper dive. Okay, let's talk about coupling and tone control caps. What you see here is a 0.1 microfarad or 100 nanofarad orange drop capacitor. It's rated at 600 volts. One of the things I like about the Syncor tester is this will test things for leakage at voltage. Your multimeter can't do it. Most cap testers don't. That's where this thing really shows its value. There's two things we have to expect out of these kind of caps. That they're close to their value, you know, especially in a tone control circuit. Uh, but coupling caps need them too because they have to pass AC and they become capacitors become more resistant. Uh, to frequencies the lower they go. So the smaller the cap, the more resistant to base frequencies it is. And this is tuned into to amps and their coupling caps. So you don't want to go too small or too big. So it's important that this is, you know, close to its rating. And also as a coupling cap, they have to block DC. You may have high voltage on one side of it and need zero on the other. And that's on a lot of tube amp circuits. Uh, your input grids have to be on zero. These can't leak or they're going to cause issues for you. So we're going to test them by testing their capacitance value and their leakage under voltage. We set the leakage voltage here. We set this to a normal capacitor. And let's find out. It says 0 0.01, 100 nanofarads. That's about right. Let's go to the leakage. And put 600 volts on there, it's zero. That's exactly what we want to see. We can put this in circuit with complete confidence. And here we see a silver mica cap. It's rated 250 picofarads at 100 volts. These are quite often used uh, in tone control circuits. This would be a treble tone cap. Let's check its value. 288 picofarads, that's a little bit high, but totally acceptable. And we test the leakage at 100 volts, that is zero. That's exactly what we want to see. Uh, these are the kind of things we want to see in any tone control or coupling cap situation. Now here we have an electrolytic capacitor. These are typically used in power supply sections to filter the DC. Tubes and transistors, they need clean DC without noise, and this is what gives it to them. Uh, they're built a little bit different than our coupling caps. They leak. Sometimes they leak a lot, but because the signal's not going through them, they're just typically used to filter our DC. That's okay within limits. And the tester here has a little chart down beneath that'll show us for the value of the cap and the voltage, how much it's allowed to leak. But I can usually just tell by the way the tester runs, whether it's good or bad. These also need to be close to their value, though they're typically under. Um, that's the filtering power of these. 
Uh, these can fail in a lot of ways, but typically, you know, they'll lose their capacitance or just go bad completely. Sometimes they can blow up, but then it's pretty obvious what's wrong with them. But usually a capacitor that's bad looks just like a capacitor that's good, and that's why we got this machine. So this is rated 47 microfarads at 450 volts. That's a typical uh, tube amp kind of filter cap. Let's check it out. The value is just a little bit under at 46. That's normal. Caps are usually under rather than over. And we go to the leakage. And it starts high. That's the microamps, and you see it rapidly kind of drops down. And already it's an area, if it was leaking like this continuously and not dropping, it'd probably be okay. It'll keep going on like this for a little bit, but we don't even have to continue it. I can tell you that that's a good cap. That's indicative of a good cap because the bad ones, you usually get all kinds of wonky readings pretty damn fast. For our final example, we're going to do another electrolytic. Uh, this is a big one like you'd see in a solid state power supply, 4,700 micro. Farads at 80 volts. This would be a medium watt amplifier uh, and it's the same kind of things. So we just want to see about the right capacitance on there. Leakage is not excessive. And one thing I note with uh, testing electrolytic caps is these are polarized. You have to observe that. You hook up an electrolytic cap backwards on DC. Well, you got a surprise coming and, and a mess too. So be very careful about that. Testing this out, 4,400, a little bit under, but, you know, typical. we we'll go to the leakage, and we're just going to look for the same kind of drop behavior as we saw before. This is a bigger one, so it takes longer. See the microamps dropping. That's totally typical, about 50, 60% every time until it gets down to about the baseline, then it slows down. That is a good cap as well. Hey, in closing, I'm going to say this. Capacitors are not your friend. Um, other than tubes, they probably have more issues than about any other component. And um, it's just a huge catalog of ways that they can make stuff go wrong. You can do some basic tests with them with the multimeter, but when you need to know, you got to, you know, bust out the big guns like this thing and test it under voltage and have the confidence that that's not the component that's causing you issues. So I hope you learned something today on tools of the trade. I'm Amtech Ron and we'll see you next time in the Amp Lab.